Mr. Ethan Jordi, CA Vice President for Pachana Joint Chamber of Commerce and Industry, to share his views on trade potential in Pak China cooperation and the use of it. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great pleasure to be here today to talk to you about topics that hold immense importance for the future of both Pakistan and China, which is about the trade potential and Park china cooperation under new projects. I will explore the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead and why it is essential that we continue to build on the foundations that have already been laid. At the same time, we also need to remove the impediments, especially the structural impediments that, that are hampering further growth in this area, especially in trade and investment. Ladies and gentlemen, China, as we all know, is one of Pakistan's largest trading partners. And both countries have taken significant steps to increase trade and investment flows between them. In recent years, the two countries have signed a number of agreements and MOUs aimed at boosting trade and investment and promoting greater economic cooperation. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is a key component of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, is a major driver of this growth. And it is expected to bring significant benefits to both the countries in the coming years. But despite all this, a lot more needs to be done in the coming five years to improve the trade between the two countries, especially increasing Pakistani exports to China. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that one of the biggest problems facing Pakistan right now is the trade deficit, which has resulted in severe economic crisis for Pakistan. Merely reducing and trying to curb imports won't help us in the long run we need to focus on increasing our exports. And Pakistan needs to utilize the framework of CPEC more effectively to be able to get more Chinese technology to develop export-oriented industry. One of the key areas where Pakistan can focus to increase exports to China is the agriculture sector. Pakistan this year touched the $1 billion mark for agriculture exports to China. And while it is an increase from our previous year, yet Pakistan's share of China's total agriculture imports was only 0.79% in 2021, which was actually a decline from 1% from 2018. This decline happened despite Pakistan's overall higher exports to China. So this means that China increased its global imports of agricultural commodities at a higher pace than it did from Pakistan. Agriculture is just one sector. If you look at the textile sector, the sports industry, the mining sector of Pakistan, there is no sector in Pakistan that has ever been able to supply 2% of China's total imports in that particular sector. There are many reasons for this inability of Pakistan's industry to be able to capture the Chinese market. First is that most of the Pakistan industries are not able to meet the quality standards of the Chinese market. The lack of standardization and certifications in Pakistan is the biggest barrier to entry into the Chinese market. Secondly, the industry here in Pakistan lacks the economies of scale and it lacks the size to actually be competitive in the Chinese market in terms of pricing. The expensive energy cost also makes it uncompetitive. With the rising cost of energy, it is almost impossible for Pakistani companies to actually compete in the Chinese market. Pakistan also lacks transport and cold storage facilities, and this hinders its export of perishable and food commodities. For example, due to this specific reason, post-harvest losses in Pakistan of fruits and vegetables account to almost 30 to 40% of the total production, which could easily be exported to China. But despite all these problems, Pakistan's exports to China are still increasing, though at a, small, at a slower rate than it should be. And there are a number of projects in pipeline which have the potential to increase exports in the future. 
and also act as an import substitution for Pakistan, helping improve the trade balance between the two countries. Currently, there are many projects that are being undertaken between Pakistan and China under the framework of CPEC, and this includes research on crop seed production, poultry breeding, chili and mushroom farming, technical training centers for industries, including a vocational training center in Gawadar, which will help the locals of Gawadar develop skills required for the industry. China is also helping Pakistan establish a disease control measure for livestock, as well as build and upgrade existing testing laboratories. One of the great success stories of the cooperation in the agri sector is the farming of chilies, which were cultivated in six model farms spanning a combined 300 acres. Last year, they yielded an estimated 700 tons of dried chilies, which were then exported to China. Furthermore, one key area that Pakistan needs to focus on is the spread of the Chinese language education in Pakistan. This would greatly help improve the communication gap between the two countries and their business and trade communities. This will also help in easier working of joint venture companies in Pakistan. And the Pakistan-China Joint Chamber of Commerce has also played an important role in this regard by promoting the Chinese language classes in Pakistan. Secondly, I feel that another major uh, problem is the disputes that have often happened in uh, joint ventures between Pakistani and Chinese companies. The legal system of Pakistan uh, is very slow to provide effective dispute resolution to foreign investors, and this is a major hurdle for foreign investment in Pakistan. In this regard as well, the Pakistan-China Joint Chamber of Commerce is setting up an alternate dispute resolution or ADR mechanism in Pakistan. This will help resolve differences and cases through out-of-court arbitration. In this regard, the Qingdao Law Society members also visited Pakistan and signed an MOU to establish an ADR desk in Pakistan and China on fast-track basis. We hope that such measures will help increase Chinese confidence in Pakistan and help in setting up of more joint ventures between the companies of the two countries. But lastly, I will like to add that for trade and investment projects to flourish and succeed, the single most important thing that Pakistan needs to achieve is political and economic stability. I will not comment on the current political situation as you all are well aware of it, but this is an area that we all as Pakistanis must focus our energies the most, despite our uh, political differences. Only then can Pakistan as a nation truly be able to take maximum benefit of CPEC, because without stability, no policy will ever succeed. Thank you so much.